The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. Yes, let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. And that's because LSMFT. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you smoothness and mildness. And no wonder, for years, Lucky Strike has maintained America's largest and most complete cigarette research laboratory. Prior to the auctions, the buyers for Lucky Strike send sample tobacco leaves from all tobacco-growing areas to this great laboratory for scientific analysis to help determine which tobaccos are really fine. And this is only one phase of the constant research that helps guarantee smoothness and mildness in every single Lucky Strike you smoke. So, smoke a Lucky. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. <laughs> Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where even as you and I, Rochester is filling out his income tax. Let's see. Name, Rochester Van Jones. Occupation, butler, chauffeur, cook, gardener, valet, masseur, window washer, and composer of time on my hands. <laughs> now, let's see. Exemptions. If married and your wife or husband had no income, or if this is a joint return of husband and wife, list wife or husband. <laughs> I better read that again. If married and your wife or husband had no income, or if this is a joint return of husband and wife, list wife or husband. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. That's what the form says. Uncle Sam says that. <laughs> well, fortunately, I'm single and have no wife or husband. <laughs> now, let's see. Enter your total wage. Oh, hello, Rochester. What are you doing? I'm filling out my income tax, Mr. Benny. It certainly is complicated. Well, I'll help you with it if you like. I sure would. All right. Now, let's see the form. Hmm. Rochester, you've got to put down your salary. Can I write it in red ink? <laughs> Why? I want them to know I'm blushing. <laughs> Never mind. Now, for the next item, list any extra monies you received as gratuities, gifts, or bonuses from your employer. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> well, let's see what you did about your deductions. For every close relative you support, you can deduct $600. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, there's my mother. Oh, Rochester, I didn't know you supported your mother. Oh, yes, that sweet little old lady I take for a drive every Saturday night. Your mother? Rochester, I happen to know that every Saturday night you take my car and go up on Mulholland Drive. Damn is for the millions! Rochester! <laughs> now, don't give me that stuff about your mother. Last Saturday night I followed you, I distinctly heard you mention Lena Horn. I said, Mother, don't lean on the horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Now, let's see the rest of this. Hmm. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Rochester, you can't list Tan Ferran as a dependent. <laughs> and what's this item you show as income? Oh, that. That was the night Mr. Harris hired me as bartender. Man, was I busy. Why, who was there? Just Mr. Harris. <laughs> oh. Uh, by the way, boss, you went to the preview of Mr. Harris's picture last night, didn't you? Yes, yes, it's called Wabash Avenue. How was it? Very good, Rochester. And Mr. Harris was excellent in it. Say, I ought to call him and tell him how much I enjoyed it. I meant to do that yesterday. I forgot all about it after I saw the picture. Hello, Mr. Harris's residence. Huh? 
Who's this? Alice. Alice? Yeah, Alice Quigley, Mr. Harris's new secretary. Oh. Well, say, is it a little confusing having two Alices in the same house? No, he calls his wife Blondie. Ah. What does he call you? Dagwood. <laughs> Oh, well, can I speak to Mr. Harris, please? I guess so. Who's calling? Oh, this is Jack Benny. Oh, just a minute. Hey, Curly, the wild goose is on the phone. (laughs) Okay, I'll take it in this room. Hiya, Jackson, what's on your mind? Well, Phil, I called to tell you how much I enjoyed your new picture, Wabash Avenue. I mean, not only did your photograph swell, but you were great in it. You gave the part everything it needed. Really, Phil, you were magnificent. I know. (laughs) Phil, Phil, why must you be so conceited? It's not conceit, Jackson. You said I was good. I know I was good, so there's no sense me being immoral about it. You must mean immodest. (laughs) But, Phil, the scene that impressed me most was the one where you were so upset about losing the girl that you went out and got drunk. Gee, you did that swell. Yeah, even Mr. Zanuck said that that scene was worthy of an Academy Award. Well, it was. Did you have to do much work on it? What work? I came in one morning, I was loaded, they shot the scene, and the star was born. <laughs> oh, fine. Anyway, Phil, you were really great in it, and so was Betty Grable. And you got some rather tough competition from Victor Mature. Oh, gee. Jackson, that mature ain't so hot. Why, last year, Paramount offered me $200,000 to play his part in Samson and Delilah. Phil, they offered you $200,000 to play Samson? Why didn't you do it? And have these tresses cut off? Are you mad? (laughs) Well, I don't blame you, Phil. Having you this way is bad enough, but bald-headed would be revolting. (laughs) You and Sammy the drummer would look like a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> Believe me. I can see your point, yeah. Oh, oh, Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris. What is it, Daggy? Your ballot said your bath is ready. Oh, I'll be right there. Hey, wait a minute, Phil. How come all of a sudden you not only have a secretary, but a valet, too? Look, Dad, you're talking to a movie star. Well, I'm glad you finished that. For a minute, I thought you were going to give milk. <laughs> Goodbye, Phil. So long, Jackson. Gee, I hope Phil's head doesn't swell too much. He can hardly get out of the house now. Well, Rochester, how are you getting along with your tax? Pretty good, boss. Would you like to look it over? Yes, let's see. Uh huh. Uh huh. Wait a minute, Roger. What's this item here for medical expense? Last year, I had one of my tonsils taken out. Roger, you only had one of your tonsils taken out? Boss, when you give me 20 minutes off, you mean 20 minutes. (laughs) Roger, you mean to say you ran out in the middle of an operation? Don't you remember when I came through the door, I still had a rubber glove in my mouth. A rubber glove? The doctor was in it till I crossed Wiltshire Boulevard. Oh, stop with that. Uncle Sam wants money, not jokes. Now, let's see what else you... I'll get it. Oh, hello, Dennis. I came to say goodbye. I'm joining the Foreign Legion. (laughs) Dennis, Dennis, look at me. You're joining the Foreign Legion? Uh Uh-huh. The French Foreign Legion? We El Capitan. El Capitan? That's Mon Capitan. I'm going by train. (laughs) Dennis, I want to ask you one thing. Does your mother know you're leaving home to join the Foreign Legion? Oh, she was the one who suggested it. Why? Well, last week I played a joke on her. On your mother? What'd you do? I put itching powder in her girdle. That's an awful thing to do. Your mother should slap your face. She can't. She's using both hands to scratch with. (laughs) Hmm. Boy, is she sorry now? She bites her fingernails. (laughs) Dennis, look. Well, I gotta leave now. I gotta join my regiment. Stop with that silly talk. You're not joining the Foreign Legion. I'm not? No. And come inside. 
Now, Dennis, forget about the Foreign Legion. You can't go now anyway. We've got a program to do Sunday. What song are you going to sing on it? Well, since it's so close to St. Patrick's Day, maybe I ought to sing Clancy, Lord of the Boom. Well, I... We must have a lot of people in our house. Well, I won't see it. <laughs> well, I won't see it till it's time for the broadcast. So let me hear it now. Yes, sir. Hmm, Foreign Legion. Go ahead and sing. Okay, hold my sword. <laughs> Your sword? Hey, look at that. Say, that sword is over three feet long. Where'd you get it? In a box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> what? It stuck out a little. <laughs> Dennis, sing, will you? <laughs> Clancy was a peaceful man, if you know what I mean. Now the cops picked up the pieces after Clancy left the scene. He never looked for trouble, that's a fact you can assume. Or nevertheless, when trouble would press, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom, 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 boom. O'Leary was a fighting man, they all knew he was tough. He strutted round the neighborhood, a short nap has got. He picked a fight with Clancy, then and there he sealed his doom. Before you could shout, O'Leary, look out, Clancy, Lord, the boom. Oh, the Clancy, oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish up, Clancy, lowered the boom, 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 boom. Now Clancy left the barber shop with tonic on his hair. He walked into the pool room and he met O'Reilly there. O'Reilly said, for goodness sakes, now do I smell perfume? Before you could stack your cue in the rack, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish of Clancy lowered the boom. Boom, 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 boom. The neighbors all turned out for Kate O'Grady's wet night. McDougal said, let's have some fun. I, I, I think I'll start a fight. He wrecked the hall, then kissed the bride, then pulverized the groom. Then quick as a wink, before you could think, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish of Clancy, lowered the boom. Oh, the Clancy. Oh, the Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish of Clancy, they lowered the boom. Boom, 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 boom. Short of the greatest sight you ever did see when Clancy lowered the boom. Dennis, <laughs> that was very good and just the right number before St. Patrick's Day. Give me back my sword. <laughs> Here, here, and don't cut yourself. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Benny? Yes? My name is Joan. The girls in my high school class are having a scavenger hunt. Uh-huh. And I was selected to come over here and get something personal from you. Something personal? Very personal. Oh. Oh, I bet I know what you have to get. A lock of my hair. I'm supposed to get the whole thing. <laughs> Hmm. Well, Joan, step in for a minute. I'll go into my room and get you one. Excuse me, man. I'll be right back. Hello. Hello. My name is Joan. I'm a junior at Chadwick High School. My name is Dennis. I'm a private in the Foreign Legion. <laughs> I leave to join my regiment tonight. Gee, you mean you're going all the way out to the desert? Uh-huh. Way over to North Africa? I thought it was in Palm Springs. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know who you are. You're Dennis Day, aren't you? Uh-huh. Gosh, wait till I tell the rest of the girls in my class I met Dennis Day. They think you're a wonderful singer. They do? Yeah, they think you're almost as good as Vic Damone. Ugh. <laughs> well, here you are, young lady. Gee, thanks, Mr. Benny. And when the scavenger hunt is over, I'll return it. Oh, you needn't bother. Just turn it loose. It'll come home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, goodbye, Joan. Goodbye. See, see, she was a pretty girl, wasn't she, Dennis? 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 And he left with her. Say, boss, I'm finished making out my income tax. I'm ready to send to the government. 
Have you got a three-cent stamp? Rochester, you've already got a three-cent stamp on the envelope. I have to put one in the envelope. That's my tax. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you're a lot... Uh-oh, look what time it is. I better turn on the radio. I don't want to miss it today. Boss, what's on the radio that's so important? I want to listen to that program. You know, they're going to announce the winner of the contest. Is that the contest that you've been sending all those soap wrappers to? Yep, that's the one. It's sponsored by the Sagebrush Soap Company. Gosh, I hope they like the slogan I sent in. Now is the hour to take a shower while the bloom is on the sage. <laughs> that ought to win it. Rochester, turn on the radio. Boss, that program doesn't come on for five minutes yet. I know, but I don't want to take any chance of missing it, you know. Boy, could I use a trip to Honolulu or two weeks in Havana. Turn on the radio. <laughs> That's not the station I want. Maybe this is it. Oh, Paul. Paul, listen to me. You've only been married to her for such a short time. Please don't leave her. I must leave her. But she's my only daughter, my only child. Please, Paul, say you won't leave her. Please don't leave her. I must leave her. Paul, I beg you, I implore you, don't leave her. Say you won't leave her. Say it, Paul. Say you won't leave her. This program is sponsored by the Lever Brothers. <laughs> Oh, that isn't the station either. And now we bring you our genial master of ceremonies, the man with the sagebrush complexion, Frank Nelson. That's it, Rasha. That's the program that has the contest. How do you do? <laughs> Once again, we bring you that thrilling program sponsored by the Sagebrush Soap Company, makers of sagebrush, the only soap with a Western motif. I know, I know. Get to the contest. And why does sagebrush soap have a Western motif? For your convenience. When you're bathing, sagebrush doesn't slip and slide all over the place, thanks to that western motif. Sagebrush is the only soap that's shaped like a gun. In the morning, all you have to do is take off your pajamas, strap on your holster, and step into the shower. Come on, come on, announce the winner. Yes, with sagebrush, the soap that's shaped like a gun, there's no rub or scrub. You shoot yourself clean. Hmm. So remember our slogan, use sagebrush soap and smell like a cowboy. <laughs> the slogan I sent in is better than that. And now we come to the announcement you've all been waiting for, the slogan that was judged the winner in our thrilling contest. This is it, this is it, Roger. This slogan that was selected from over 12 entries. <laughs> and here it is. Now is the hour to take a shower while the bloom is on the safe. See, that's the lousiest slogan I... Yikes! What? <laughs> What's the matter, boy? That lousy slogan is mine. Gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, that winning slogan was sent in by Mr. Jack Benny of 360 North Camden Drive, Beverly Hills. We're glad to know that our soap is getting into that part of the city. <laughs> Never mind the talk. What's the prize? What's the prize? Boss, boss, do you think you'll get a trip to Honolulu? I don't know. Havana isn't bad either. Yes, Mr. Benny, for sending in that slogan to the Sagebrush Soap Company, you have won yourself a trip. Pack my bags, Rochester. Yes, sir, a magnificent trip. Shall I pack a ukulele? Not yet. It might be Havana. Oh, uh, Mr. Benny, you're a lucky man. You have won yourself six glorious weeks at that romantic spot of song and story. Yes, yes. That Shangri-La whose shores are lapped by the languid waters of the blue Pacific. Pismo Beach! <laughs> Pismo Beach? What happened to Honolulu? And now, in honor of our contest winner, Mr. Jack Benny, who sent in our new slogan, Now is the hour to take a shower while the bloom is on the sage, our quartet, Proctor, Gamble, Palmolive, and Pete, <laughs> will wish our contest winner bon voyage. Take it, boys. By the sea, by the sea, by the sea.
a beautiful sea. Pismo Beach, Pismo Beach, oh, how happy you'll be. When each wave comes a-rollin' in, you will duck or swim. And you'll float and fool around the water. Over and under and then up for air. Just use one dab of blue and you won't lose your hair. You'll have a lot of fun a shooting clams with your soap gun at Pismo by the beautiful sea. Lucky strike, lucky strike, you will smoke them all day. And for smoothness and mildness, you'll say they're okay. Round and firm and so fully packed, made of fine tub back. Yes, it's LS, LS, LS. MFT, MFT, by the beautiful sea. Take a puff, take a puff, and we know you'll agree. You'll find there's no rough puff or puff, 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 or rough, puff, 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 small by the beautiful sea. Imagine me winning a trip just to Pismo Beach. It's only 200 miles from here. Shall I pack your tuxedo, boss? Rochester, I don't have to dress formal to dig clams. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Drear Poussin speaking to you from Washington. <laughs> My first prediction is that the federal budget will soon be balanced. This feat will be accomplished as soon as we collect the income tax from Bob Hope. <laughs> He's not kidding. The money Bob's making at the Paramount New York will do it. Shut off the radio, Rochester. Well, I think that I... I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Mr. Kitchen. <laughs> Mr. Benny, I just called you up to congratulate you. Congratulate me? Yeah, I was sitting here at home listening to the radio when all of a sudden they're announcing you the winner on a contest. Oh, that. What a slogan. <laughs> now is the hour to take a shower while Mrs. Bloom is on the stage. <laughs> no, no, Mr. Kitzel, that's Bloom is on the stage. Oh, I thought it was his wife. <laughs> oh, oh. Mr. Benny, are you lucky? My, my, what I wouldn't give to spend six glorious weeks in Pismo Beach. Well, Mr. Kitzel, Pismo Beach is a lovely place, but I can go there any time. It's close by. I don't have to win it. Anyway, I'm not going. But a vacation would do you good, Mr. Benny. You've been working too hard. Well, I know, I know. Every Sunday, a radio program, and five nights a week on television. Me? On television? I never miss it. Time for Benny. <laughs> well, look, that's Beanie. Time for Beanie. See that? <laughs> look, Mr. Kitzel, they're puppets. Ooh, puppets, muppets. I still think a vacation is good for everybody, and that's why I'm going to Sun Valley this week. Oh, you're going up Sun Valley? Yes, I'm going up to do some skiing. Well, you better be careful, Mr. Kitzel. You know, Ali Khan uh, broke his leg while skiing. Now he's confined to his home for six months. <laughs> so what? <laughs> when you're married to Rita Hayworth, where do you want to go? <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. Well, it was nice of you to call, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Shoot a clam for me. I told you I'm not going. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Look, I'm kind of tired. I think I'll go upstairs and go to bed early tonight. I have rehearsal tomorrow, and I... I don't... For heaven's sake, what's that? Take it easy. Take it easy. I'm coming. Are you Benny? Yes. You Jack Benny? Yes, yes. Good. The car's at the court. The motor's running. Let's go. Yeah, come on. Come on. The motor's running. What are you fellas talking about? We're from the Sagebrush Soap Company. Yeah, we came to take you to Pismo Beach. Wait a minute. You won the contest. What a slogan. And now, now is the hour to take a shower while the bloom is on a shake. Look, fellas, fellas, hey, come look. Come on, Benny. Get your clam shovel. We'll be on our way. I'm not getting any clam shovel. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Go to bed? Are you trying to insult the Sagebrush Soap Company? Yeah, you didn't win the ordinary prize, like a trip to Honolulu. Or the Havana. You won a trip to Pismo Beach. I know, I know. They mentioned it on the radio. What a slogan. And now, now is the hour to take a shower while the bloom is on a Oh, day. for heaven's sake, fellas. Now, Come look on, it. Benny. Come on, it's Let go of my arm. Come on. 
Stop pulling me, do you hear? Stop. I'm not going to go. You're going to spend six glorious weeks at Pismo Beach if we have to drag you there. Now let go of me. Grab him, Joe. I got him. Fellas, please. What a slogan. Now, now is the hour. Now, 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 now look, this is ridiculous. Now turn me loose or I'll sue your company. Now get out of here, you hear? Get out. I said out. 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 Wow. The last time I ever entered a contest. Imagine those guys coming in here trying to force me to... Boss! Boss, I thought you'd gone. Gone? No one's going to make... Rochester, where are you going with your suitcase? Well, I figured while you were spending six glorious weeks at Pismo Beach, I'd go and have my other tonsil taken out. <laughs> well, I'm not going. You can have that done tomorrow during your lunch hour. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my extreme pleasure now to present the Vice President of the Columbia Broadcasting System, Mr. Howard Meegan. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on behalf of the Columbia Broadcasting System to offer our congratulations to Jack Benny for having won the greatest honor that has ever been bestowed on a radio artist. Radio Daily conducted a poll among all of the radio editors and columnists in the United States and Canada. And Jack Benny was selected as the greatest radio personality in the past 25 years. He and his... <laughs> Gee, I, I'm only 39. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, Jack, CBS wants to add their congratulations to the many you've no doubt already received. Well, thank you, Mr. Megan, and I'm very grateful and very proud of this honor. I want to thank Radio Daily, who conducted the poll, and the radio editors and columnists of the United States and Canada. I'd like everyone to know that this tribute is equally shared with my cast, my writers, in fact, every member of my staff. And I also want to thank you listeners who have been so loyal through the years. Thanks very much. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first, let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a lucky strike. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a lucky strike. And that's because LSMFT, LSMFT, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you smoothness and mildness with never a rough puff. Listen to what Mr. Tom Jones, an independent tobacco auctioneer from Mount Airy, North Carolina, recently said. In 18 years of auctioneering at market after market, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Fine, ripe cigarette tobacco that makes a smooth, mild smoke. I've smoked Luckies for 15 years. Millions of smokers, including the glamorous movie star Marlena Dietrich, take a tip from the experts and smoke Lucky Strike. Just recently, lovely Miss Dietrich said, Every Lucky Strike I've ever smoked has tasted mild and smooth to me. That's the big reason why I've smoked them for many years. And for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, light up a lucky. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a lucky strike. Get a carton today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about the 1950 Easter seal sale for crippled children. In these trying days when so much thought and money is being spent to destroy, what a wonderful thing it is to be able to give someone a chance to mend. The Easter Seal Company uh, campaign, the Easter Seal campaign does just that by helping crippled children. So won't you please send what you can, as soon as you can, to Crippled Children, Post Office Box 5050, Chicago, 80, Illinois. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, hello, Mary. Yeah, I'm sorry you couldn't come over to my house today. We had such excitement. How's your... Gesundheit. How's your... Gesundheit. Mary, how's your... Gesundheit. <laughs> Gee, that was a long one. <laughs> what? Well, I was going to ask you how your cold was, but never mind. What would you say, Mary? Oh, you heard what Mr. Megan said? Well, thanks, Mary. I feel very happy about it. So long, Dow. Be sure to hear Dennis Day and the Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned to the Amos Nanny Show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.